Maybe some of you have had dreams with spiritual warfare where you're being attacked or there's certain things coming against you. Maybe God is allowing you to have these dreams in this specific moment because he's trying to awaken you to get into the place of prayer and to fight off the spiritual battles that are taking place in the unseen realms. Today, I want to speak to you on decrypting the dream code. Now, this is so fun for me. I, I just, I get so excited. It's so wonderful to teach people how to break down what God is speaking, what he's saying, and to really sink your teeth in. And as the word of God says, reason and understand God as you hear what he's trying to say. So, I want to begin by explaining to you something. Some of you may be thinking, I know you're talking about all of these dreams, but I've been trying, I've been trying. I have a friend, they're really good at interpreting dreams, but I am not good at all. Here is the good news for you. Grace can actually not just be imparted or given from birth. Grace can also be taught. You see, the Bible says in Ephesians 4 verse 7, to each one, grace has been given as Christ has apportioned it. And Romans 12 verse 6 reminds us, we have different gifts according to the grace given to us through, again, the Holy Spirit. However, we see throughout scripture when Paul speaks to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 verse 6, he says, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God. And so what you understand is that actually a gift can be stirred up, especially through the laying of hands, impartation, prayer, and through you practicing stirring up gifts that God wants to put on the inside of you. I can tell you firsthand that I actually was not a master dream interpreter from birth. No, when I first came to Christ, I didn't understand what God was saying. I was thinking, God, I don't understand a single thing. But as I spent more time in the word of God, in prayer and practicing dissecting my dreams, God found me faithful and began to open my heart to understand what exactly he was saying. And so I want people to get it today. Practice really and truly can help to perfect a gift and develop something that God is trying to bud and cultivate on the inside of you. And I actually want to start by saying that even with Joseph and Daniel, some of the most popular dream interpreters that we see throughout scripture, you actually see that they actually had to hear from God to get an interpretation. It wasn't just an instant thing. I think some people think, okay, if I've got the gift, that simply means that the moment I wake up in the morning, I'm just going to get the dream, understand it straight away, and Bob is your uncle. No, actually, Daniel when he heard of the dream, went to his friends and decided that it is time that we pray together. Let me read the scripture. Daniel 2, chapter uh, 17 to 19 goes in on this. So when it goes to uh, verse 18, it says, he urged his friends to plead for the mercy of God. So we, not, we need to understand right here that God actually raises up people who can interpret not just instantaneously, but as they seek his face. Let me read in fullness. Then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends. He urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery. So he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. This gift is ready to be stirred up in the place of prayer because God delights to reveal the mysteries to men. I'm gonna to explain to you how certain dreams may come. You may find that there actually is just simply, you know, a regular basic simple dream, or there may be a symbolic dream, or there may be another level to it, a complex symbolic dream. Now, 
A simple message dream is something that is very clear and very plain. You see this, you know, uh, in Matthew chapter one and chapter two, when Joseph actually receives a dream from God and it's a direction, very clear, as clear as day. And God is saying, go in this direction. This is very obvious. And a lot of the time, these are the dreams that people do receive or maybe pay attention to because they're very clear. Then you also have a symbolic dream that is still quite simple. Maybe it's, you know, uh, deeper, I would say, in terms of revelation. But actually, it's more, I would say, a greater level and requires maybe a little bit more attention and probing and investigation. So with these types of dreams, you may see symbolism, just as the Bible is filled with parables, metaphors and stories. Maybe you'll find that these dreams have certain unique symbols that you must pay attention to. I'm going to give you some right now. You know, maybe some of you have been dreaming of bread or different things like that. And God is actually through the symbol of bread, trying to actually emphasize him wanting you to get deeper into the word of God. Maybe you might have had a dream of, let's say, a house. Oftentimes when we dream of houses, God is actually trying to speak to you about your spiritual condition. It's not just a regular house. God is actually trying to get your attention. You know, a lot of people know the word tells us about the house that was built on sand and the house that was actually built on stone, that when the winds and storms came, it stood strong. That scripture is talking spiritually about a house, the person's house, how they are, how they operate, what they put their firm foundation on. Perhaps there are other types of symbols or ways in which God familiarly talks and shares things through, for example, a snake. A snake can represent Satan as we see throughout the word of God in Genesis, for example, and the list goes on. And so with these dreams, it is quite simple maybe to understand them. And for those who find it a little bit difficult, you can go into the reference of the word of God to simply pluck out and see where these symbols align and how they're used by God to illustrate points. Now, a complex symbolic dream is one that really is very intense and oftentimes very difficult for people to understand. We've all been there. I know we've had dreams where it feels like it's gone on for all night. We just, you know, had all of these crazy things going on and it just seems so, so intense. But I want you to understand that those dreams are often the ones that we shouldn't dismiss. And I've come to you today with certain tools to help you with interpretation. So. Let's get into decrypting these codes and how we can really get an understanding. First and foremost, write the dream down, okay? This is very basic, but the amount of people I know who never write their dreams down, they wonder why they forget the dream so easily and they wonder why they never really get the good understanding of it either. Habakkuk 2.2 reminds us that we should actually write the vision down and make it plain so that whoever reads it may run with it. Listen, God is actually expecting you, if he gives you a very complex dream, write it down, write down the bullet points if you can't remember the full thing and simply see what God is saying plainly to you so what you can run with what he's instructing you to do with it. Point number two, write down the key parts of what you see. You see in Jeremiah 30 verse two, the Bible says, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, write in a book, the words that I have spoken to you. God was actually instructing the prophets to get into the word of God and to actually write down what he was saying. Get into, get into what I'm saying he's trying to invite them into. Get into what I'm trying to divulge. divulge. He wanted people to get into what he was trying to communicate by writing it down. The next point that I would like to say is dissect little by little. And I really wanna go into this because oftentimes I think we can see a dream and we just feel like, okay, 
Maybe I should get it like off the bat. I don't understand this, that and the other. No, no, God is inviting you to dissect these things little by little, pointing out what we see and what we understand. In scripture, Jeremiah chapter one, verse 11, we actually see the Lord says to Jeremiah, what do you see? And I believe that God is saying that even right now to people, what do you see? I've shown you something. What do you see? Write it down and see what God is trying to communicate. Okay, I saw, you know, this monkey and then I after, afterwards I saw this and afterwards I, I've seen this. In the book of Jeremiah, the Lord responds to him after he explains what he's seen and he says, you have seen well. Write down what you've seen and dissect little by little. The Bible says, whom shall he teach knowledge in Isaiah 28, starting from verse nine. He says, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Take the dream line upon line. Really look into what God is trying to communicate because he wants to give you insight, revelation and knowledge. I'm really giving you some practical tips here because I think oftentimes you can talk about this, we can teach on this, but these are actually simple and basic steps that oftentimes are overlooked because we just get so caught up in what's going on. And the final step I want to share with you is pray and parallel what you are seeing to scripture. Oftentimes one of the best ways um, I you know, get my revelation and understanding, it's not necessarily just through prayer. You know, maybe I've prayed and I still can't understand what God is trying to communicate with me. So I'll go onto the internet and I will actually type in uh, the, I would say main points of the dream that I can see into, you know, a, a website such as, you know, the Bible Gateway or Bible Hub. And I will just put those words in that I've seen. And then it will instantly show me all of the scriptures that relate to that symbol or that sign. And I will begin to pray and discern through the scriptures how God is trying to speak to me or what he's specifically trying to say. And that will help you a whole lot. And so I want you to also understand one of the ways in which uh, God can actually be speaking to you in your dreams may not necessarily just be for one purpose or for one specific thing. God has many things that he wants to divulge in dreams. God has many things that he wants to say. And I have a list of things that I wanna share with you that they could be on. You know, sometimes God may actually give you dreams pertaining to your destiny and to your calling. For some of you, that is one of your main prayer points in this season. You're praying, God, show me purpose. God, give me answers. And he's maybe been trying to communicate with you and you've not really understood. So he gives you a dream so that you can get it. This is what happened with Joseph in the Bible. And God may just be doing that with you. You know, some of you may have been having a dream of a child, for example. Children in dreams don't necessarily mean that you're actually going to be having a child. God may be using symbolism to speak to you about a child of promise, i.e. a ministry that he's placed on the inside of you. I know we spoke about pregnancy in my last episode, but also I want you to realize that pregnancy dreams can actually not necessarily just be about the soul. If you're not pregnant and you know that you've not been with a man or a woman, uh, God may be actually been trying, maybe, well, actually a woman or a, <laughs> sorry, I made a mistake there. <laughs> if you are a woman and you dream that you are pregnant, it's not necessarily saying that you're actually going to have a baby. God may be trying to communicate that he actually wants to birth something new through your life. Just like Mary was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, perhaps God is trying to show you in your dream that he's overshadowing you with a new ministry, with a calling or wanting to do something very special. Maybe you keep dreaming of children and God is trying to say to you that he actually has a legacy that he's placed on the inside of you that he is trying to birth through you. Maybe, for example, you may find that you are having, having so many dreams of you praying and delivering people from demons. 
Perhaps you're praying and you know, you're know you laying hands on people and you're seeing that they're getting healed. They're walking up from wheelchairs. You're preaching in stadiums. And I wanna tell you something, God is a God who loves to show the end from the beginning. God may just be showing you the calling that is placed on the inside of your life. And he's trying to challenge you to wake up and listen and hear what he has called you to walk into. And I can personally attest to this because before I was preaching, you know, at crusades to thousands of people and I was going around the world sharing the gospel and doing all of these things, God was actually showing me in dreams. I remember dreaming of me laying hands on sick people and seeing them recover. I remember myself seeing people literally getting healed and touched and delivered. And I'd never seen any of that in my life, but God was preparing me to show me where he was propelling me. And this is what God enjoys to do. Maybe some of you have had dreams with spiritual warfare where you're being attacked or there's certain things coming against you. Maybe God is allowing you to have these dreams in this specific moment because he's trying to awaken you to get into the place of prayer and to fight off the spiritual battles that are taking place in the unseen realms. This is a type of God that we serve, a one who uses dreams to release impartation in dreams, intercession in dreams, healing in dreams, courage and strength in dreams, prophetic understanding, deliverance in dreams. I remember when I even had a dream that I saw a woman who was hobbling because she had issues with her right leg. When I woke up that very day, I went to the bus stop and I saw the exact same woman that I'd seen in my dream and asked her, sorry, excuse me, do you suffer from issues in your leg? The woman looked at me in shock and she said, yes, yes, I do. I have issues in my leg. How did you know that? I said, I believe God gave me insight into my dream and I, in my dreams. And I was allowed to share my faith with this woman because through a dream, God was able to give me a word of knowledge, which is a divine fact that I would have not been able to know without the Holy Spirit revealing it to me. And I was able to now share with this woman on who our Lord and Savior was on who truly heals. And I was able to pray for this woman. What if God was trying to give you signs and understanding in your dreams so that you could do the very same thing? And so there are some questions that I believe will equip you and help you to decrypt dreams today that I really want to give to you. The first question that I think you should ask yourself when you have a dream is firstly, are you the main character? Or are you just involved? This is really key, please pay attention. Because whether you're participating or whether you're observing can actually shift what the dream means. If you're an observer in a dream, it is often because God is giving you insight into a situation that does not necessarily have to do with you. So for example, you may kind of feel like you're a fly on the wall, looking in and seeing a situation going on. Maybe you're in somebody else's body and you're going through their experiences that are happening to them in the dream. And God often gives this to intercessors because he can entrust them to experience the emotions and the feelings of the people that he is showing them about to take these situations to prayer and to help these people in the place of intercession. And so sometimes you'll actually be the one where, you know, you are the main character and God is saying, yes, this dream actually is about you. And so the next question that we must ask ourselves is, is the dream positive or negative? Is the dream in color or is it black? Because guess what? Demons work in darkness, but God works in light. The Bible tells us very clearly that God is light. And so we must understand that he is a God who operates in color. He's the God who produced a rainbow as a sign of covenant to his people. If you are dreaming in color, vibrant colors, it is because God is trying to give you a vivid dream. 
But dreams that are in black and white tend to reveal that you are spiritually dull. I actually didn't know that people did dream in black and white until I met them. And the people that I met explained that oftentimes these black and white dreams were ones that were filled with fear. They were ones that they had nightmares in. They were ones that were, you know, they were walking in slow motion, which can represent the spirit of delay in your life. These people were seeing the dullness of these dreams and oftentimes were being attacked in their dreams. It was a sign that they were spiritually weak and God wanted to try and empower them. And so you can tell whether a dream is positive or negative, oftentimes because of the color. Now, the next question is, are these dreams repetitive dreams? You see, Job 33 reminds us that God speaks in one way and yet another, but man does not perceive it. So oftentimes God has to repeat himself in order to emphasize something. Dreams that happen right before you wake up, just like when Jacob dreamt of the angels ascending and descending on the ladder just before he woke up. It was actually a revelation that was from God. God was giving a dream right before the participant woke up to emphasize urgency. And if you dream of a poignant dream right before you wake up and you go through the day and it does not leave your heart, you know that God is trying to speak something very important to you. Repetitive dreams emphasize that as well. God is trying to deal with something here. Maybe you are having repetitive dreams of yourself being chased. It may be a good thing or a bad thing. Perhaps you're being chased down by the enemy or maybe you're being pursued by your calling, which you're running away from. You must pray and ask God, what are you trying to say? But these are specific tools which will really help you in dissecting and understanding what God is saying through these specific types of frameworks that I'm giving you to help dissect and discern what God is trying to communicate. And so, what you can see is that if there is that common theme that is coming back, God's trying to say, hey, my son, my daughter, there's something that I need to deal with you with. There's something that you maybe haven't dealt with, dealt with in your own life. Maybe some of you are actually dreaming dreams whereby God is showing you, you know, I am going to use you in this area or I'm going to, you know, uh, help you in this specific area. God is repeating these dreams so that you can trust in him. God is repeating these dreams so that you can say, God, yes, I know that you're on my side and you're strengthening me so that I understand. You see, Joseph dreamt twice in his youth about what God wanted to do with his destiny. God was emphasizing a point because God never speaks for no reason. God was trying to re-emphasize and re-communicate what exactly he was going to do in the lives of his sons and his daughters. And so it's really important that we ask ourselves these questions when we are dissecting dreams. We must also ask ourselves what exactly in this dream is standing out to me the most? Sometimes we can get caught up in all the extra details and all the, what are the, main, what are the main things that you're seeing here? I like to usually start out with maybe two or three main key things. Then when I wake up and I write them down, I begin to pray into them. And if God decides to give me insight into some of the minor situations, then I know, okay, God, uh, you want me to pay attention to this. Don't overwhelm yourself with uh, too many details overwhelm yourself with trying to hear God's voice and getting into his presence and saying, God, I need you. When you are more consumed with actually being intimate with God and hearing what he's saying, God himself will take care of the rest. And that will really, really help you, dreamers. It will really help you to really see, God, what are you trying to say here? How are you trying to say it? What is the things that I need to actually pay attention to? And what are the things that I kind of just need to, you know, dismiss? God will help you. I'm really glad that I was able to give you some insights today on how you can begin to decrypt some of the mysteries that God is trying to share with you. This is really important because I believe that oftentimes we can miss a dream because it's too complex. But when you start to break down a dream, God is able to actually show you, no, 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 nothing is impossible for me. I can communicate and tell you what I'm trying to say to you. 
Don't dismiss your dreams, dream family. Make sure that you pick them up, write them down and begin to try and break into what God is trying to say. Some of you, I know you love breaking down scripture and you love getting into the word of God and, you know, seeing what he's saying. I want you to understand that a dream should never take you away from reading scripture. In fact, a dream should push you towards the Bible. A dream should actually push you towards a place of prayer and get you into a place where you're actually equipping yourself more in the word of God. All of it is about getting before God, seeking his face and trying to discern what is really going on. I hope that these tips are really helpful for you. I personally wish that I had somebody who had been able to train me up and show me that there are different avenues and angles and ways in which I can test and hear and know God's voice. And I pray that this episode has been edifying and helpful to you today. God bless you, Dream Family. This is Nia Cerise. Goodbye and God bless you today.